Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn how to create a thread using anonymous class. So in past uh, videos, we have learned how to create a thread uh, by extending a thread class or by implementing runnable interface. And we had created a separate class for that, right? But uh, when you want to create a thread by using anonymous class concept, then you don't need to really create a separate class for it. Right? right so here i have a class is called client test one which contains the main method here i'm going to show you how to create a thread using anonymous class you can create an anonymous class for a concrete class abstract class as well as interface so as we know that thread is a concrete class so here uh, i'm going to create a first thread using uh, anonymous class So here I'm going to create an anonymous class for thread class itself. So I'd say thread, let's say thread is t1 equals to, you can, you can use a constructor of thread. So here I'm going to use this constructor which takes the thread name. So I would supply the thread name as t1. And once you create an object of this thread, something like this. So we will have to specify the curly bracket open close and close curly bracket always end with the semicolon when you write a anonymous class for any concrete class and inside this close bracket open and close which ended with the semicolon inside it will have to override the run method right which is in which is in the thread class so here i'm going to override the run method and you are done and here let's say this loop is start from one and ended with iterating five times so equals to five so equal to five and inside this loop let's print the thread name so we have a thread class is having a current thread which will give you the reference of current thread and we will retrieve the name of the thread and here i'll say after printing the name of the thread value of i would like to print over here so let's print the value of i and this is the first anonymous thread we have created. Now let's copy this code snippet and let's say the second thread is T2. Now we have created a two thread, right? T1 and T2. Now we need to start it. So uh, let's say T1 dot start and T2 dot start and you are done, right? So here we have created a two, two threads given the name as T1 and T2. So this is the name of our thread and basically each thread is executing a run method, its own run method and there we are looping five times and just we are printing the thread name and value of i which is which is incremented by each thread. So if I run this application then you will see there would be some kind of context switching between these two threads and here you can see where i got the first, i1 got the first. T1 got the first chance, then T2, T1, T2. So there is some context switching happens between these two threads. So this is the first approach to create the thread using anonymous class, using a thread class. Now, second thing we are going to learn, guys, one more thing I would like to clear you over here. So here we have created a two anonymous class. So uh, basically compiler is going to generate uh, uh, three classes, dot class file for this. One dot class file for your uh, client test one and there are uh, two dot class files for these two anonymous classes so this is considered as an internal class or inner class you can say so there will be a separate dot class file for t1 and t2 right now let's create a uh, create a thread using a runnable interface as i said you can create a anonymous class for even for interface so let's create a anonymous class for runnable interface so i would say a uh, uh, runnable let's say r equals to new runnable when you do this then then tool is tool is uh, basically uh, trying to suggest uh, would you like to create anonymous inner type we'll say yes we'll select this one and here you can see a run method is there so here this seems like uh, you are creating an object but this is not an object this is an anonymous class because runnable is an interface right which is having a single method is called run so you, you cannot create an object of uh, interface but you can of course create an anonymous class so uh, earlier what we had done we had created a separate class that was implementing runnable interface and there we had already run method but here what we have done we have created an anonymous class so 
runnable r equals to new runnable curly bracket open close and on universe class as i said always end with the semicolon and within that we have overridden the run method and let's copy this code snippet over here and paste it over here now i'm going to create so in earlier video tutorial we have learned uh, when uh, when we create a thread using by implementing a runnable interface then first of all we will have to create a thread uh, something like this thread one and you need to uh, use one of the uh, thread constructor so let's say i'm going to use this constructor which accepts first argument as a runnable object and second is the thread name itself so we have a runnable object r which we have created through using anonymous class and thread name we can specify as again t1 and we can create uh, as many as thread you want so here i'm going to create a three threads and let's name t1 t2 and t3 now time has come we can start these threads right so by calling the start method so so once you start the thread then internally jvm will call the run method so let's say thread one dot start similarly let's start thread two and thread three as well and if i run this application then that should run properly now we have started a three thread right and here you can see there is context switching between t1 t2 and t3 thread right so this is also a way to create a thread using anonymous class using runnable interface right so here uh, we have we are passing the same runnable object to the all these three methods so that's what we have a only one run method so we have a if you have a requirement to execute more than one business logic in different thread right so you can have a multiple runnable object also you can create so let's say what we can do we can create one more so here we have passed the same runnable object to all these three threads so in that case only one task is going to run by the all three threads suppose you have a different task that you can create a more uh, uh, anonymous class for a runnable uh, interface so here let's see this is uh, r2 and uh, here again you can create a thread let's say let's create two more threads over here and this is thread uh, let's say four and five and let's say thread four and five and again we can start these two threads so thread dot start and thread five dot start and uh, if i run this project that should run properly and here you can see there is context switching between thread t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 right so i hope you understood and here also one thing you will have oh sorry guys i have passed the same runnable object here you will have to pass r2 that was our purpose to create a second runnable uh, second anonymous class so here you will have to pass the r2 else uh, that will execute the same uh, business logic right so, so if i run this then this will indefinitely uh, so for um, to verify it you can specify like something like this so loop is start from sorry 40 and to 50 if i run it then this verifies that we i mean thread uh, t4 and t5 is executing some other business uh, other task right and here you can see there is context switching between thread t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 right so that's the way to create the uh, i mean thread using anonymous class using thread class as well as runnable interface here again uh, i mean compiler is going to generate a separate dot class file for these two anonymous class so don't forget this one so guys i hope you enjoyed learning this video this code is very simple so i'm not going to check in on the github okay so it's pretty straightforward so guys uh, I hope you enjoyed learning this video if yes then please hit on the like button and please share and subscribe my youtube channel as well and guys big thank you for watching this video and see you next video tutorial